free. Sound yeah. check. Yeah. Once it starts, then you can just leave it go. We don't need to keep setting it. So we can just leave it go for 50 minutes. Tell us when we're ready, Stephen. Uh, everyone speaking. How's the sound? Testing one, two, three. Go. Okay. Where am I looking at? Is the camera straight in front of me? Or just at Fenton? What? Either or, yeah? Okay, the camera's going every way. Okay, so welcome everybody to one of the great guinea pig experiments in poker in life. Uh, this is speed coaching. We have 10 people ready to coach in about 45 minutes. Um, I could say what the idea about it is, but maybe it speaks for itself. You know, we're just going to try and help people get ready for the tournaments that they're playing um, this weekend and maybe throw, uh, sow a few seeds for their long-term poker playing. So instead of them wandering around aimlessly like zombies and wondering whether they're just going to get into a quick cash game or satellite before the tournament, this is like, these are the hardcore, the elite, the SAS, yeah? And, uh, you know, these are the people who really care about the game. Maybe no one else does that isn't here. So, okay. So first up, we have our supreme leader, Finton Gavin of the Irish Poker Tour. And Finton has been on a bit of a heater recently. Um, he's become a specialist in Omaha satellites. Finton. Andy, first of all, thank you for giving me a bit of time. I really appreciate it because I know you're really busy. I think this is a brilliant idea what you're doing. It really is. I've been trying to get coaching lessons off you for years. Well, you wouldn't talk to me a few years back. Yeah. Now you're starting to talk but to I me. But I was again. talking to you, Finton. It I wasn't was just more. No, no. It was just more. You know the way there's this whole thing when, you know, you have to wait outside the monastery. Okay, yeah. okay. You know, in the snow and the rain. Okay. And then you're ready to come in. And okay. you were just going through that bit. You're probably so right. So we were communicating, okay. but not I talking. I didn't realise that. I didn't realise that. That's fantastic. But it f did it feel... I'm, I'm just after learning something brilliant. Did so it feel unpleasant? Already this has taught me so much. Uh, did it feel I'm unpleasant? I'm going back. I'm getting out of the <laughs> monastery. <laughs> <laughs> but did it feel unpleasant? Ah, uh, no, no. I'm oh, then that maybe, maybe we're going <laughs> to actually Chubichy. send you back outside again. <laughs> okay. No, no, joking aside, yes. um, you, like myself, are a bit mercurial at poker. So I was thinking about it and realizing you were going to be first guy up here. I have one simple question to ask. Yes. There are times whenever you just don't care and, and the, the building collapses very quickly. But then once you kind of get in the zone, you're in the best few players in this country. What on earth do you do to be in that zone. Okay, thanks for saying that. I appreciate you giving me a compliment like that. But I think you've read it pretty bang on. I think motivation for me is a huge thing. If I'm not motivated, if I'm not focused, I'm brutal and I just, I just don't care. And I really have to get my mindset right, but I don't know how to get it right. And that's one of the reasons I agreed to talk to you today. So, you know? so if you go back, like those, those uh, the last, uh, you, you won a tournament recently, but you won about four Omaha satellites in a row. Yeah, they're going brilliant. There's yeah. been four satellites. To the but you're, you're very Omaha. busy. You've got like a, lot of, like a mm. lot of people who play poker. You've got a lot on. You're actually running this gig, but you manage to somehow focus enough to do that. So if you were to describe in a couple of sentences just mm. what is it that you do? How are you whenever you play well? Just take a moment, yeah? Whenever, it, well, what is it that is the foundation for you being mm. motivated? How would you describe that? Um, well, I'd say the first thing I do is turn off my phone if I want to play. Right. Well. That's the first thing I do. But then uh, I have a little chat to myself and I just say, right, am I playing this or am I playing this? If I'm just playing it and messing, whatever happens, happens. But if I actually may, I make a conscious decision that I'm actually going to play well, and, and then, so my next question to you is, so say you manage to say that, right? Those times you manage okay. to say that before you play. As the game progresses a little bit and the, the demon voices come in, do yeah. you need to say it to yourself again or what do you need to do? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it depends how the tournament's going. If it's not going too well, I certainly have to remind myself. But, you know, if I can get in the zone, get in the flow, do you know what I mean? More often than not, you know, it works out well. It so it's not well. a big it's not a big thing. It's maybe just a little Yeah, it's a little tweak. For me it's really simple, but other stuff in the background has to be going good as well. You know, m you know, Fiona has to be happy, the kids have to be happy. Right. Do you know what I mean? There's no one knocking on my door looking for something. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you know, uh, my responsibilities have to be met. That for me that's a key thing being able to play well. 
if there's and no noise. And would you say that's almost a kind of black and white thing in some ways in terms of your results, or is it grey sometimes? For, okay, for me, it's a baseline thing. Okay, if things are, if my responsibilities are met, well, then I can play really well. I can make, I can make that decision more clear in my mind. Okay, I'm playing well. But if I have stuff niggling at me, it's very difficult. Because when I look at you, I mean, the greatest finisher ever in Irish poker was, was Noel Furlong. Yeah, yeah. And what he used to do is he used to get more focused as the yeah. tournament went on. And you're a bit like that. If you yeah. can manage to get in near the last table or two, then, then look out. Because, because you're still making plays when other people aren't. The problem arises whenever you just sort of randomly make plays early on. <laughs> yes, yeah? yes. So it sounds like, I mean, w would it be, just to be absolutely crystal clear, just for you, because we're going to finish up now, yeah? Taking it away, if you were to describe very simply what you're going to do whenever you play the Omaha High Roller, which you've won four satellites for, yeah. at 3 o'clock today, what's going to keep you in there? Like, let's say, even if you lose a, chips a few chips right at the beginning. Well, it's going to be hard because it's a really tough field, as you know. Yeah. Like, you know that, that could be a motivating factor for me, that I'm playing top ranks, so I have to up my game. So th I think that's one factor that I can you know, help me get motivated. But yeah, I'm going to have to clearly make the decision. I'm going to give it my best shot and continually remind myself to do that. That's, I guess that's what it is. Finn and Gavin. Thanks, top man. Pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, that was brilliant. Hey, so... so I'm going to do a summary of that. Th what, what Finton said is, is very common. You know, if the rest of your life is right, then that is a big factor. Um, and also, uh, whenever it's often something very simple that we forget. That uh, Just to tell yourself, for him it was t tell myself to be motivated. Tell myself this matters. And um, just to maybe repeat that, to have a plan. You have to have a plan actually repeat that. Now, Fintan didn't use the word plan, but that's essentially what he was describing. So. So this is the moment of what you call dead time. Okay. So, hi. Hi. Who are you? Peter. I Peter. know you're Peter. Peter Crotty. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me, why are you here? To hear from the master. <laughs> so in a way, I'm going to be asking everyone a kind of similar question. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, what's the next tournament you're playing? The main at two, maybe? No, the like uh, twelve o'clock. Oh, you're going to play that's yeah, day two. Uh, oh, you're you you actually made it today yeah, too. Yeah. Oh, I actually. Well, I don't I want to help you too much because you you'd be much. playing against yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, so so. Would so I have hundred and fifty thousand. Well, would you find that your game varies a bit for different reasons? Oh, yeah, definitely. And what are those reasons? I suppose maybe it's like mood going into it and, you know, starting off maybe with a couple of bad beats, not getting any cards, you know, an early bluff going, lo going wrong. And then you just, you know, you're watching other people, you're seeing, they just seem to be getting all the cards and, you know, and then you're gone. So, okay, here's my question to you very specifically, yeah? Let's say you've got a decent mood, right? So what you're describing there is a difficulty dealing with setbacks. Mm. Would that have the consequence of you maybe playing slightly weaker hands when you shouldn't? Oh being yeah, slightly definitely. impatient? Definitely. Right. Definitely. So how do we plug that leak? Get up off the table, go have a quick walk, come back. I don't, yeah. you know, how I'm often do you do that? I don't. Right? I don't, yeah, I don't. So yeah. that, might be, that might be quite a radical move, yeah? yeah? Because it's good whenever you're just before uh, an important sort of day two or something like that to not do anything too radical. Mm. So I think walking away, if you're going to come up with a strategy, would be too much. Mm. How about just... Yeah. Yeah? Get up, get up and just Even, even just a little yeah. shake, yeah. right? And what would you say to yourself? You, uh, so this is a very... Uh, you know, it's a good one. It's a physical. Often doing something physical, mm. you try and talk to yourself, but the mind, after exploring the mind for many years, yeah. you know, the mind just, it doesn't listen to the mind. Yeah? But the, the foundation of the mind is the body. So doing something physical. So if you were to do something physical to, uh, if you feel that sort of sense of losing it a wee bit, yeah. what would that physical thing be? Something simple. What, what yeah, comes no, to I mean, as you said, just, just to stand up. And but what is you know, it? No, I'm asking you to do it now, whatever it is, and you're not standing up. Yeah. 
So I'm asking, you're sitting at the table, what's the physical thing that you might do just to kind of get yourself back in the zone? Just exactly that, you know, just stand up. No, just it, it's stand very... Up, just stand up, do... But you, you see, know? everyone's different, right? Everyone's yeah. different. So that's... That might be... Uh, my father used to rub his hands, but... Yeah. But it's interesting. It, it's, it's sort of thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Not what someone else says to do or not what you think you should do. Mm. So maybe it's and something small and simple. So why don't we try that today? Yeah. If I'm yeah. playing against you and I see you doing yeah, this, okay. I'll be going, oh, no, that guy's getting back in the zone. Yeah? <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah? True. How does that sound? Yeah, no, that's probably the thing to do. Yeah? yeah. And then now going in before the tournament, um, you say so you reckon sometimes you're not – is it more when it uh, when you go in or you set up differently at different times uh, well it can be but like i mean you know say for example you start off and you do end up having a number of bad beats or you end up getting no cards or you end up you know your first or your second bluff doesn't work i just you know that is bad for me for the so rest your sensitivity and awareness to what's going on decreases yeah, yeah. so you miss yes. stuff yeah correct. yeah Definitely. So let's keep it nice and simple. Yeah. Uh, it's more when you do this, yeah, connect it somehow to actually remaining focused mm -hmm. for you, however you would describe yourself. If I'd longer, we could go into that. But yeah. for you, just connect this to doing this and not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Peter? Okay. Cheers. <laughs> See you at the final table. See you at the final table. Great, thank you. So yeah, I mean, again, it's uh, you know, as you see, it's it's another simple thing. It, it, it's it's uh, that's a classic that people get a bit downhearted. And again, what what's important about these things is everyone's got their own subtly different approach to actually finding a solution. So you can go and read a book or listen to me or say listen to what somebody else is telling you to do. What's much more important, right? which is what Peter eventually did there, is even the type of movement, you know, what you smell, what you see, what you think, you know, it's, it's yours. It's some kind of method that is yours or methods that are yours that you're trying to find. Next person. Keith. Hello, Andy. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, Thanks nice to see me. you. Yeah, I, it's funny. Uh, now, Keith, Keith. Uh, I mean, uh, we've been friendly for many years, and yeah. Keith, uh, in some ways, represents uh, a, a significant uh, proportion of people here. They played a lot of poker, were even a bit professional at some point, and then they went back to their business. Yeah, so he's been doing his construction business for about seven years, and and. Now they're coming in from a position of not having played much, mm -hmm. yeah? So how's it going? You've been here a day or two, yeah? Two days now. Yeah, um, and what's your, what's your kind of... You know, as I said to you the last day, like, I played five years professionally, like, and I had no problem walking into rooms. I, when I walked into the room here two days ago, jeez, it was a bit of nervousness. It, and you've done a, coaching as well room. before. And I've coached, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it, it affects everybody, like, do you know? And I, I think... Like, if, if, if somebody's going to play a lot of poker, they need to be getting regular coaching or regular discussions with somebody that's well used to the game, likes yourself. Do you know, quick five, ten minute sessions, even even while you're playing. And yeah. You, and you'd have a chat. You know, like, I've, I've had a few chats with you yesterday, throughout the day. Picked your brain a bit, like, you know. And, ha and, and how, did, how did that help you? What did it, for you, what did it Heavy bring up? focus. Yeah, so... Uh, I did find myself getting distracted sitting down, right, yesterday. Who's around? Who's over that table? Just having a look around. It's been so long, like, you know. But when I got into it, I had a few chats with people, discussed a few hands, helped me even focus more. Right, so the memory muscle is there yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's almost like to remember that you exactly. can remember. Yeah. Yeah? I can so do this. Yeah, but you've done it. You do have it. done it. Yeah, yeah. It's not even remembering how to do oh. it, I would suggest. Yeah. You actually just need to tune in to the fact that you have done it. Yeah. You know, you've done Focus. the basics again mm. and again and again. Yeah, yeah. And I think as well, one thing that which I think an awful lot is that for players, um, you just need to play your best game. 
Yeah, you can prepare and consider things uh, generally to try and help yeah, yourself. Yeah. But when you're about to play a tournament, uh -huh. yeah, you just play your game. It's the same in all sports, you know, that the people actually, you do your training before, but this stuff is almost just to remember, yeah? yeah. And you have more than most, mm -hmm. like really sort of successful periods to remember. Yeah, that's it. So if you were just in a Probably sense... Tell the grandchildren. Sorry? <laughs> Something to tell the grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> but for you now, just to hear it, because even just to say it, how would you describe you as a good player? What are you going to do today? When you're playing today, well, how would you describe that? How would you put it into words? How would you feel? And also, you're a physical guy. So mm. for you particularly, I'm going to say, how are you sitting? How are you looking? Yeah, so, mm. so give me a sense of that. I think just be relaxed. So how is relaxed? I want you to sit and do whatever. You're now at the relaxed, table. Like if I'm at the table, I, yeah. I, I, my chair is tight to the table. And I okay. just sit into my chair and relax. Right. You know, I might have my hands on the table. I might fold them. I'll, I'm, I'll re be relaxed. Right. I you get you. You can't be stressed. You can't be up straight. Or and when you're like that, the mind isn't going to wonder so much, is exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It helps me focus because you're in your comfort zone. It's like I'm like sitting at home in front of this TV, you know, sit down, just pay attention. I, and, and I keep myself occupied that way. I'll watch every player and I focus on them. I'll get to know them without even knowing them. So you're saying it's almost like you've got your physical and kind of relaxation yeah. sort of sense right. Because it is, is quite physical and that creates the basis for awareness of the other players exactly, yeah. which is a big part of yours and I would suggest most people game yeah. that they don't do well enough and when, when you're doing those two things you can be confident mm -hmm. that it's much more difficult to yeah, destabilize it, it, it you. It helps me with reading abilities because I just think that's super important to be able to tell if a fella's full of shit or not. If that creates your foundation, yeah, yeah. do it. Andy, good man, thanks very much. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, some people are, I know Keith is very physical, he's in construction, and, and I think this applies to everybody. It's almost the basis of how you sit, the basis of the mind, when you look at any of the kind of uh, traditions that explore the mind, the basis of the mind is not the mind, it's the body. So it's not like you have to be some kind of athlete, etc., etc. But simply be in, in contact with you being physical, sitting on your chair, etc., etc. And then coming up with your own version of you being relaxed can sometimes just be enough to create a foundation for loads of other good stuff. Next person. Yeah, 100%. Hi, Hello. I'm Paul, running from County Down. Paul from County Down. How yeah, are you? what can you I do you for? Ah, well, <laughs> tell you what, you've already done me for something so uh, far because I've been listening in to Finton and the, the okay. guys. And yes, I got a lot from Finton, I suppose, because um, the thing that I have to do as well, I have to switch off from my business, I have to switch okay. off from all the things that I do outside. Um, and sometimes, well, 95% of the times I don't. So if I'm going to play well, I've completely switched off from everything else outside. So describe that to me. It's for you. For for me, it's like um, you know, th there's that many things going on in the background that if you you just want to play. I want to describe now. Now you see, this yes, is a tense here. I'm just going to pick this up on you. Yeah. Because this happens to a lot of people. You ask them to describe what they're doing when they're not distracted, and then they tend oh. to, particularly if they're very busy. You know, they have a very busy other yeah. life. You know, a lot of responsibilities, maybe a lot of high pressure stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. They're understandably, their tendency is to start describing that, and that is your battle. So yeah. you've described it, and then when I ask you to say, how are you when you're not doing that, you start oh. describing how you are yes. when you are yes, busy. Yes, yes, yes. So let's try it well, again. Man, okay, so how I am when I'm, when I'm like that is I'm more relaxed. I'm more focused on the game. Um, I find that I play better poker. So I want you, what I want you to do is just go slightly deeper into it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are you doing differently? You're describing the consequence, I'm but I want you to describe what I, you I'm are actually taking, doing. I'm taking stock of what's going on around me at the table. Taking stock. As in, I'm 
I'm trying to figure out the different players. I'm trying to figure right. out Right. Now, here's my styles. question. Sort of in your, what, what other business? Do you do a bit of I've business? I've got an electrical business, yeah. An electrical business. Would it be true to say that in your electrical business, to the degree you do that well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So the moment I said that, you could feel the seriousness coming yeah. in in your yeah, eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would it be a fair way to describe it? When you're doing your job well, right? When yeah. you're running your, your business well, right? Mm -hmm. Would it be you take stock? Yeah. Now, there you go. So all you have to do, Paul, and again, this is very common, is you just take the, the, the thing that you're good at, yeah. your work. Understand. And you take the bit of the, 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 the characteristic where you're very good at taking stock, which is your words, mm -hmm. and you use that in your poker game. Yeah. So does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, it does, surely, yeah. I've so now you don't need to worry about like letting everything go and letting your worries go and yeah, and, yeah. And, and and being distracted. So basically you're just taking from one just to the other, the, yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. The bit that you're strong at in your business, you transfer over that. Sounds now, how good. would you remember to do that? Okay, the only way I'd remember to do that, right, would be if I, again, like Finton, if I want to play uh, socially or want to play seriously, and I've got to be in, I've got to sort of get myself ready. So how do you get in that state very so quickly? Everyone's slightly so different. So, so what I'll say to myself is, okay, I'll, I'll do things, I guess I'll watch people. Right, I'll, I'll watch. I'll watch people. I'll talk to people. You know, when you come to a poker tournament, you're always talking to different people. Okay, I'll talk to people that I know, maybe a, who are a lot more experienced than me, whatever else, and that helps me. So it does. That helps me to talk to them as well, and it gets me in that mood. So see, today, now today, I'm in a mood to play seriously. Already. Right. So then, Already. then maybe in part of that, here's here's just a very quick question before we finish yeah. up. Would that involve avoiding or moving quickly away from conversations that aren't like that? Yes. Right. Yes. So let's keep that in mind. So there's a thing you do, but it, let's say you're coming along and somebody starts telling you a bad beat or they're just distracted. You can be polite, but you can yes. just kind of, yes. all right. Yes. And they won't care. They'll just yeah, go and talk to someone else. Yeah, exactly. And you just move away. Exactly. Yeah? Yeah. So That's right. well set up, yep. ready to 100%. go. Yep. Thanks very much. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck today. Yeah, you too. Yeah, again, a really common thing. And again, a lot of the same principles, but particularly for people who are very busy at business, they invariably have the secret to their success and how they do their business, their job, their family, etc., etc. well. It's just a matter of teasing that out and then putting some practical kind of steps and uh, stuff around it, you know. And again, for everyone it's unique, but the principles are often the same. Next. Hello. Terry. Yes. Thanks. How are you today? Good, good. Yeah, thanks. So, Terry, mm -hmm. now you I know you you deal but you play as well, yeah? Yeah, I do both, yeah. Yeah. So, uh and are you playing something today? Yeah, I'm yeah. going to, yeah. What what's your plan? The main event? Yes. Okay, so you're playing at two o'clock, yeah? And and again, a very simple question. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you play well, sometimes you play badly, yeah? Describe how it is for you when you play well. When I play well, you're yes. right? Yes. Remember, remember, actually, I, I'm gonna ask you very specifically. Mm -hmm. Remember the one time when you think you played your best. Can you remember that? Yeah. Right, tell me a little bit about that. I think the best time, you know, w when I feel like I play best, right, was here, actually, you know. Oh, right. Well, place, that's yeah. great already in Killarney. Yeah. <laughs> it was a uh, Irish Masters, you know. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I, c I kicked out, you know, many, like, uh, poker stars, you know. Right. Yeah. Good. Good on you. They deserve to be kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so what was it? Was there something that you could remember now mm -hmm. from then that would help you? Now, well that, that time, obviously, you know, my experience, w you know, not like a same like now, right? Was right. nicer than now. Well, ac actually, I played very well, you know. Because okay. Yeah, because I play very tight, and uh, you know, I'm part of control, you know. But now, when you get more experience, you know, when you learn more, you start to think more, you know. You start to think, you know, maybe uh <coughs> he's bluffing me, you know. And uh, it's uh, logical, you know, in front and uh, after the logical is, it's not logical, you know. Uh, it could be a hero call, it could be a good call, you know. So 
you think it a lot, you know, but before you don't think that much. It's like ABC, you know. One yeah, two, three, I mean, there's an old yeah. phrase in the kind of like spiritual kind of growth and development mm -hmm. world called yeah. in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. Yeah. In the expert's mind, there are few. Yeah. So even though you think of more things, mm -hmm. back then, whenever you were new, I don't think maybe you were playing just tighter. Yeah. You were almost more tuned in. Would, would, would that be true? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Whereas now sense. you're full of more knowledge. Yeah. So how do we get you back there today? Okay. I'll give you one simple example, right? Okay. Yeah. When you hit the top pair, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you bet, right, and uh, somebody push you all in, you know, y you kn you knew that he probably he has like a flash draw or straight draw, right? Mm. But before, you know, I can fold easily, you know, because because uh, the way I thought is in a tournament, you know, if if somebody beat you once, you are out, you know, even they have thirty three percent, they are behind. But now, you know, because you know that you are ahead, you know, and they are behind. And probably you'll you'll go for it. Mm. That take more risk, you know. But how how okay, can so you know? look, yeah. I'm gonna just go from what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You all you're saying is something very simple. Yeah. To win today you wanna play a bit tighter, yeah? Maybe, you know. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Thanks. That's it? Mm-hmm. Uh, take this here. Yeah. yeah, play tighter. I mean you're saying it yourself. I think you're right, actually. I think you're right. Pleasure. You too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's... It's funny, you know. I mean, he's describing something which I think is very, very true. That, that often whenever people get more experience, then they have more options. And they almost sort of outthink themselves. And it gets confusing. And in practical terms, they put themselves in more marginal situations. So, um, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, in, in these tournaments, as long as you're not going up to the super high roller tournaments in the world, yeah, um, often tight is, is probably one of the best strategies. It certainly is the best strategy unless you're very, very good at being loose. And that, that is tricky, you know. And if you try and become a looser player, it can become very, uh, you know, your road can be very twisty, you know, so that's a whole other subject, but yep. Next. All right, James. <laughs> James. Andy, pleasure to meet you. Yes, you too. What can I do you for? What do you want to do me for? Where do you start? <laughs> 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 yeah, no, no, I mean, I mean, I suppose the opening question is, um, you know, you've been watching a few of these now. You've got to sense yourself. What comes to mind that's important for you? There's probably two things that stand out. Um, one thing is, and I kind of touched on the last one as well, the whole area of the more you know, the more you realize you don't know in the game. You know what I mean? Right. Kind of, you know, kind of where you had nearly a false sense of confidence before you knew more. You know what I mean? Kind of. Mm. And uh, I suppose dealing with that then kind of. So how would that look like for you today particularly? So what are you going to do? Like sometimes you get a sense of that, sometimes you don't. Yeah. So what are you going to do today what, what to, to make that a reality? Just kind of make the situation as simple as possible. Take one situation at a time and play the cards you're dealt. You know, okay. Kind of. So one. So for you, right, one situation at a time. Whenever you do that, what are you doing in, in, at the table? Well, how are you looking? How are you feeling? What are you saying? And that kind of stuff. I suppose ex extreme focus, I suppose, kind of, and getting a feel feel for the people at the table and a feel for yourself or where you're at. And, you know what I mean? kind so of how do you get a feel? How do you get a feel for people at the table? It's perception. You know what I mean? Kind of, if you get it after time, whether they're tight or aggressive, th th that sort of thing. You know so I mean? you're not kind being lazy. Not being lazy. Being right. Alert, very alert. And you can, you can be lazy, yeah? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Now, just give me a quick description of wh how you're lazy. How would that be? Um, what, what kind of things do you do that would be lazy? You're daydreaming. You know what I mean? Looking up at the, the top prize or you're kind of fiddling or... The top prize. Checking Twitter or, you know what I mean? Who's Twitter. over there? How's he doing? Now, for you particularly, some people can do that and it doesn't distract them too much, yeah? But are you describing for you that when you do that even a bit, it's a problem? 
it have to be a problem. You mean you for you? No, some people yeah. can actually do it. Yeah. So, so it's very important for you. You're saying that if you do that really at all, that might be a problem. That's taken away. I suppose it's, it's situation as well. It, sometimes it's the good if get out your head. Sometimes you need a, a refresh. So uh, it's like a bit of salt in your diet. Sometimes, but no yeah. more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So just a little sprinkling of salt. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes they say that about wisdom. You know, yeah. you can't have too much. You can only have a little sprinkle. Yeah. So, so today, so you just put your little sprinkle of Twitter and a little bit of distraction, not too much, yeah? You don't let the horse kind of bolt and go wild, mm. yeah? Anything else that, that produces your best game? There's something else there that's big. Yeah, it's, um, I think Fint and touched on as well. When you're bullish and you're here to play, you know what I mean, kind of, and you have that focus or that drive saying, yeah, today is today. I'm playing my top okay, game. Okay, let's do the physical. Yeah. How are you when you're bullish? What are you sitting like? How's your head? How's your arms? It's, uh, How are you? Do it now. You are. You'll remember. It'll come back to you because you've done it. Yes, it's confident and assured, I suppose. And Look at that. Did you yeah. see that? See what did th yeah. you did there? No, no. There was just a slight slip back of the shoulders. Yeah. Right? So sometimes, you know, and this may be getting almost into a therapeutic world, but I like that shit. Yeah? But... It, your your mood or your way of sort of being is just slightly sort of forced. I I'm I'm not I'm not amazing. Yeah. It's just very yeah. subtle. It's tiny. It's very very subtle. But it's fascinating that you just did a slight, just a slight. It's only about an inch back of the shoulders. So a classic kind of physical maneuver to remind yourself to do that, which is you know if you you look like you do a bit of exercise. So as you just actually bring your shoulders up and down. So for you, how does that feel if you did that? Yeah, it's does that rem it get and resets then resets you? Yeah, kind of brings you. Oh no, bring you back. And I see when you said reset you, you went like this. You went. <laughs> I don't want to play against that guy. Yeah, thank you, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And next. Hey Mick, how are you? Yeah, we were playing together yesterday. Yeah, we were. Yeah, you were a tricky opponent. Yeah, you were talking a very talk. I wasn't used to it. I was. Oh I good. Yeah, I well played live that much, like so. I was kind of a bit of a. Ah, you 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 acquitted yourself well. So, what's on your mind today? You've been listening to these. You get yeah. the gist of it. Yeah, yeah. Just I suppose, like I said, I was. I'm not that used to playing live, so it's more adapting to playing from playing on online to live, like. And I suppose knowing what's like what what are the adaptions I suppose. And what did you see uh, yesterday? That th what did you learn? Uh, well, <coughs> I don't know. I, I something like it was just I f probably didn't feel as confident in my game like as I would have if I was playing online. There were certain spots where I was like, yeah, I definitely would have tree bet that online. But like, why did I just call? Okay, so why like didn't that. you? I don't know. I I just kind of felt. So how are you going to do that today? Because I think you can build up the live skills, right? We yeah. had a couple of conversations, which I don't have time to go into there, which stuck in my mind yeah. during the game, yeah? yeah? Of things you were just completely unaware of from a live point of yeah. view, yeah? yeah? That's what I mean. Like you were saying yeah. stuff to me and I was kind of... And you were going, really? How could you see that, yeah? yeah. And now, now, in fairness, it is me, but, but, uh, but nonetheless, um, from a practical point of view, I think you should just stick you know, manage to transfer your skills from online yeah yeah to live and then slowly build up the extra little skills yeah okay. so but but you have to have the confidence mm -hmm. to do that so are we going to get the confidence yeah you yeah. got the wisdom yeah i'd okay. say you've got you basically you're describing you've got some moves you know mm -hmm. and i saw you make moves yeah yeah but you're not you didn't follow through so how are we going to follow through um i suppose that's I, don't I don't know. So that's why I'm here, I suppose. Like, as in, follow through, you mean like... I mean, I mean yesterday, for example, there's one spot where you're clear you should three, but it looks like it would have worked. Yeah. And you didn't do it, yeah? Pre-flop, was it? I can't remember. Okay. You're saying that there's... Yeah. So there was some oh, sorry, things the one you, the one you mentioned. didn't sorry, do, yeah? Mentioned. You mentioned yeah, yeah, sorry, it, yeah? I don't know which yeah. hand it was, yeah? yeah? So so let's just treat that as a general thing. You know, mm -hmm. one of the, the key aspects of a poker player, yeah, as you get deeper along, yeah? Yeah is that they may have the wisdom, but can they pull the trigger? Yeah. Yeah? And I saw you at times pulling the trigger, but, but you were unconfident about it. Yeah. So today, 
What simple thing can you say to yourself that will actually get you to pull the trigger when you think it's uh, a good uh, idea? I suppose just maybe just pretend, like, just play the way I play online, sorry. Um, so how do you do that, yeah? Like, it's just, I don't know, I'm just more confident. Like, I would have pulled the trigger online, but it's like, why am I, why didn't I do it here? Right. Maybe, maybe just so let's just go very, it. just a little bit more detailed. Mm. So when you <laughs> we go back to one of those ones, can you remember one of those ones yesterday? Yeah. Just for yourself, right? You mm. don't need to describe it, right? What would you have done differently in your thinking process to pull the trigger? Um, in my thinking At the time. Just go back there. Yeah. I don't know. Well, like, see, the, the guy opened 3X and it was kind of like, oh, maybe, I wasn't really sure what. No, like but you I still, but you thought you should do it. Yeah. Now, so it doesn't matter whether yeah, you're yeah, right yeah, or wrong, yeah. right? We're just looking at it generically, yeah? yeah? What might you have said with to yourself to actually do that? To go with what you thought was the best I thing to I do. I thought you would have said, like, well, if, if I'm playing online, this is, I'm going to 3-bet. Why aren't I 3 in here? Now, we well need to make it more real. Sorry, right. If I'm yeah, playing yeah. online yeah, yeah. is one step away, yeah. That's the, you're making a gap between them. So how do we bring them together? Go back again, yeah. and what would you say to yourself? One simple thing, it's there. Um, and it will have less than four words. Pull the trigger. Is it, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Simple. Yeah, pull the trigger. Okay. And Annette. Hello, Annette. Nice to see you. Very well. Thank you. In fairness to Finton. So, yeah, we've known each other a long time, but I'm going to ask you about something. There was a recent tournament I was in, and you were right down near the end of it. I think you nearly won it. Oh, it was the Unibet. The was that stack. the Unibet, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah? Are we live, are we? Yeah, we're live. Oh, we're going oh, live. This is oh, all. We're <laughs> immediately live, yeah? Yes. So, so, I mean, you've been playing for many years, but it's nice thinking of a recent memory. Um what is it you do when you play well? What is it when you do when you play badly? I think with you it's probably quite subtle. You're pretty steady, you know? I am pretty steady and that is probably that is probably the downside of my game is that I will get to the top 10-15% but to burst through into the top 1% is... Does your game change at all near the end? <laughs> Doesn't change enough, clearly. Um, probably affected by a gender bias uh, I I in terms of... And I'm not playing the woman card in this. No, no, no. What I am deal. saying is that w women um, hate to lose more than they love to men, uh, win. The the male thing, the one mm. characteristic I see in poker, and because it's so male dominated, well, there's a number of reasons, but m most of it is because women have kids and they have other lives and they have to keep the show on the road. But when it comes to the the, the hard aggressive trust of winning, so a guy has more yeah. in the tank than yeah, the no, it's, it's true, and a lot of people don't want to talk know. about this. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. said this and got yeah. flack for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. almost like that. You've probably described it better than I can, but it's some kind of killer instinct, it is wanting to win it is more than evil. anything it is else. Evil. It's prime evil. Yeah, yeah. So, and this is my question to you: at different times, there's a subtle difference. I think most people, what they do is, is when they're trying to change something, they put something up there, right? Mm. And it's almost like, oh, I sort of I can't be like that I can't have that killer instinct and what stops most people actually improving in the areas they want to improve in is not looking for the tiniest of change mm -hmm. the tiniest the smallest bit of change you do that tiny bit of more killer instinct mm -hmm. in one or two tiny spots then you kind of go oh I can do that right so for you if you were going to introduce Maybe you remember a time you did it, yes. right? Just that little bit more of an edge. Now, I've seen you make plays at various times, and I've seen you look different, yeah? Right, okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So how would you make, just introduce that just a little bit more? Well, if you've played with me now, Andy, and if you've seen me make plays, and if you've seen me that tiny bit difference... What am I doing wrong and what can I do better? Uh, uh, you know. I'm asking you. It has to come <coughs> from you. I feel, I feel, I sort of feel I've seen you at different times where there's just a bit of a... Mm. Mm. It's very subtle, right? Mm. Yeah. It's good almost like... Good way, bad way. Yeah, it's just a bit aggressive. Right, okay, right. Right? Yeah. 
but then at other times it's more passive yes, yes, right yes. so you she, so it's more of a mood thing so i'm asking you a question what might you say to yourself that would just remind you uh, it's just very subtle mm. it's just that little bit mm. well what what is it there's something there that you've got sort of in there that you know yourself now you looked you looked down to your left right mm -hmm. and that's memory mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so you went like this right mm -hmm. your eyeballs went down to your left so you something there mm -hmm. it might just be a word it might be a a memory it could be something yeah I d i'm not quite sure what it is what is it i don't know andy i don't know but sure then we'll go looking for it and if i look down and see two good cards that always is a real big help <laughs> you right. know, in finding it in the tank is uh, at the end of the day uh, it is a game of cards as well as all of what we bring to it as a person you know it is a you know. and in in the uni bet when you were coming down near the end of the uni bet just have another go at this from a different angle yeah mm. you were coming down near the end of the uni bet and you maybe didn't you know, didn't grab it quite so much in probably a couple of hands. Probably, definitely. And like I say, is... Whether Can you remember one hand, maybe you should have gone for it a bit and, uh, uh, and didn't. Without going into it, but, but a hand maybe pre-flop, you should have played, but you didn't. You feel like... Yeah, sometimes being out of position, sometimes being a bit marginal, sometimes multiple people having moved before you. All of the, like, every every hand is situational. You know, so there's no point talking about any one hand, but every hand is situation, and uh, and every hand is situational. Uh, for me as well, is even that by way of a vibe, is there is a fella that will make a move on me. There's a fella that won't make a move on me. If I think a guy won't make a move on me, and suddenly he's making a move on me, I have to, I have to re, I have to reboot my, I have to reboot where I am. Do you know? Um, and so. It's okay, it's well then, what I'm going to ask you to try and do. Hand. What what I'm going to try and ask you to do, right? Yeah is just attempt to take a little bit more charge right. so it's not about them right but subtly <gasps> so the first thing that comes into your mind is do i think it's a good idea and fuck these other people oh <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just yeah, so yeah, could yeah. you try that? I, I, it's I only try that. and I'm saying it's only a matter of maybe doing it one hand today. Mm. Mm. But not a, uh, in one where it's marginal, mm. right? So find this kind of marginal hand you think and you're not sure and just spend an extra second or two thinking maybe maybe I'm just being a little bit defensive here. Mm. Could you try that today? I'll try that. And then and then, you know, come come to me and chat to me afterwards yeah, and yeah. tell me how that went, yeah, but I hope yeah. I don't knock you out. <laughs> yeah. We've always we've always uh, <laughs> a friend of mine says is you go, you play your damnedest, you play your heart out and then you end up talking to yourself the whole way going home. And you know <laughs> that, that's you know that, that is the reality of So it. then it's just That is the reality that of So the little well just the do that extra yes. bit of talking to yourself during yes. the hand and, and rather than on the way home. Yeah, rather than <laughs> on the way home. Okay, okay. absolute you, pleasure. Andy. Good luck in the game. <laughs> right. And we're going to do the last interview. It's three minutes because I'm about to play Audrey. Here, uh, can someone look at the clock there and tell me, Donald, Donald, how long have I got? Yeah. Okay, Audrey. Now, Audrey is a phenomenon here. She deserves to be applauded. She has never played poker. No. And she is going to actually have a go at a tournament, yeah? Yeah. Right? That's the plan. So, how come you're so brave? Well, I like the atmosphere in a poker room, and I'd like to be part of it. Right. So... I have thought about you. I was thinking about you last night in terms of what I would say to you in terms of what might be helpful. Yeah. And I, uh, what comes to mind is a guy called Phil Helmuth who's won more poker tournaments than anyone else, you know, World Series bracelets than anyone else ever by a long way. And he wrote this book and he said, you should just play the top 10 hands. And okay. that's nines and higher. Yeah. Okay. Ace king and ace queen. Perfect. Okay. So for the first few hours of the tournament, just try that and spend the rest of your time learning. Okay. And do you gauge the players or? The first thing you need to do, because if you look down at every hand and you think, should I play, people will tend to just call with all sorts of hands. So I'm restricting you to about 10 hands. Ace-queen, ace-king, nines-tenths, 
and just throw away the rest of them. Okay. Yeah? yeah? And spend the rest of the time learning the next few hours. And as you learn, you will find your game. Perfect. How does that sound? That will yeah. give you the chance to learn and it will take the pressure off you. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Any questions now? Because I have about a minute before I start this day two of oh the tournament. Okay. What's the big blind and the small blind? Ah, right. So that uh, the button is the person who acts last. Okay. Yeah. It's a little bit complicated, yeah? But then the big blind and small blind force people to put chips in. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. So, so it eats into their... At the beginning, in the first round of betting, the action goes from the big blind, and then after that, it goes from the button. So the closer you are to the button, the more information you have, because uh, you act last. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Good luck. You're very Thanks brave. Very much. Yeah, <laughs> you're an inspiration to all those who are just... You know, you're doing an interview about coaching and you've never played a hand of poker. No, never. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Take care. Right.